Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Meek again. Welcome to the Big H Rodeo of Bait. One of you told me you like how I say bait and blocked. Well, guess what? We'll be, I'll be saying the word bait a lot. This is, of course, part one of my bait series. I was telling a bunch of you in my videos that I had been working on it for a few weeks. So this is part one. It is a four-part series. Um, and you know how we do on this channel, okay? We respect the Kate Turney, okay? Because she's a stallion that doesn't play. So we will be referring to the series by a code name. The code name is Rodeo. The horse jokes and metaphors never stop on this page, okay? So we have so much to get through. There's actually, like I said, a playlist. So you can just watch all of the, the episodes from this series um, on the playlist, which you can find on my like channel pages if you just click on my channel name you'll see playlists and you'll see that it's called rodeo okay all right so first of all I just want to just give an intro introduction I beg your pardon um, about what this is about and what this isn't about this is not a formula this isn't a um, like the gospel this isn't uh, anything like that in terms of scoring um, everyone shops at Big H at their own peril um, it's up to you to decide how you want to shop at the uh, how you want to shop at the brand. Um, this is just meant to be helpful. I feel like when I first started getting into Big H and I decided I wanted to start shopping at the brand, I feel like I like was reading a lot of information. But then once I went shopping in January at Big H and I saw the three prison stores and I visited all three of them I feel like the actual experience on the ground was completely different to the things I had read about online even in forums and I was thinking about this the other day like well why is the information completely different and why was why why does this first of all why does this lottery not work <laughs> and then I realized that a lot of the information a lot of people who really know the tea don't want to share it um, people are a little bit nervous about sharing things when it pertains to the cage because they don't want to get in trouble I completely understand that and I respect that but also there is this kind of like willful misinformation when it pertains to the big cage game so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna keep it very respectful I'm not really gonna share a lot of pictures of the products that I mentioned I might share one or two pictures I'm not saying that this is what you have to do but after speaking to at least a baker's dozen of you my own experience shopping in January like the things that I saw when I was on the ground in Paris and also a ton of research about different markets I have basically come to the conclusion for the series that there are certain shopping categories that if you shop in them you're more likely to be considered for the three holy grails so let's decide what the three holy grails are the Birkin obviously the Kelly and the Constance these are the three bags that in France and obviously Big H is a French company, in France, Big H um, calls them their three iconic bags. That's actually what they're referred to. Um, so the Constance, you will respect her honey because she is with her brothers and sisters, the Birkin and the Kelly, and she's very much taken seriously. So like in terms of um, scoring these three iconic bags as they're known, like what needs to be done? Well, as we have found out, and if you watch videos, and if you're in forums or in Facebook groups, you have to show um, a kind of financial loyalty, let's say, to the brand. And then um, the most loyal shoppers of the house are considered for the three holy grail bags. So that's a kind of general rule. However, there are um, caveats. There are, you know, certain um, things that kind of stray from the norm. So I want to quickly just talk about the wishlist countries because I do think this is relevant. I know there are going to be some people saying, well, I live here and how come I didn't have to go one-to-one -one or I didn't have to spend a bunch of money and I was um, given a bag. Let's be clear about one thing. Big H has never actually said publicly that this is a real thing. Big H will always deny it. And by the way, you should never ask your essay or, or anyone um, at Big H, is it true that you have to buy things in order to get a, B, a BK or C? They're going to say no. But um, if you have your ear to the ground and if you just pay attention, it's very obvious that the BKCs go to the most loyal shoppers. The number way, the number one way of showing loyalty to a brand is through spending the most money. I mean, this is just basic business. I mean, it's a, the number one rule of business. The best clients are the clients that spend the most money. And that's it. Um, and that's the same for any business. I mean, Big H is no special in this regard. I think sometimes we act like like Big H is so special in this regard. Every business is like that, okay? My business is like that too. My, my best clients are the ones that spend the most money. I mean, it is what it is, okay? All right, so let's talk about the wishlist countries. 
the wishless countries are, generally speaking, um, countries that are in Europe, and this is how they work. In a wishless country, the UK, the Republic of Ireland, Switzerland, um, the Netherlands, etc., um, you put your name down and you tell them your wish, your, or your wishes, and you say the bags that you want. Then they will look at the incoming inventory that they have, they'll look at how long you've been waiting, they will look to see maybe if you've bought something, um, not necessarily gone one-to-one -one or anything. Um, and then in most cases in wishless countries, people get offered bags. Um, some of you have told me privately, well, how come, you know, that person's in a wishless country and they haven't had to spend any money and how come, you know, I live in America or I live in Canada and I have to go two to one. The reason I have kind of figured out based on reading their annual report, literally based on reading a, 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 a financial document, which is publicly, you know, put out there is that the most profitable markets are not actually in Europe. Europe is not actually that profitable for the brand. It's really all of the countries in Asia, Australia, Canada, and um, the US that are the most profitable markets for BKH. So in their most profitable markets, they require um, a degree of pre-spend, let's say, and they want clients to show as much financial loyalty as possible, let's say. Whereas in the European markets, um, they're what are known in business as a legacy. So they've been there, you know, for ages and everything, but it's not that profitable anymore at, compared to say um, a market like Singapore where they have a bunch of boutiques there, a market like Thailand where they have lots of stores and markets like China and Japan where, you know, they've got racks and racks and racks of boutiques and lots and lots of people are spending money. So it makes sense to kind of have a wishlist system in a, in a market that's not as competitive as, as say the US or Australia or Singapore or China. So I hope you understand and in a wishlist country, people's wishes Will basically, you basically will get your, your bag eventually, even if you don't really spend any money. It'll take a year. It might take 14 months. It might take um, a bunch of time, but eventually you're going to get your bag, okay? All right, now um, I want to just quick, before we start talking about fine jewelry and timepieces, because that's really um, the focus, I want to talk about equestrian. So obviously equestrian is like, you know, the way the brand started, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure all of you know that. So I'm not really gonna dwell on that. Um, there are a few of you who ride, I mean, obviously if you do ride, I feel like this is a great category um, just because it's just such a big part of their brand um, and their DNA and like their heritage, even though it's not a huge part of the business anymore, it still plays a huge role in terms of the branding and the horses and all of this. So I think obviously if this is something that you're into, um, you should consider it. In the early days of my channel, I remember there was one of you who told me you were an equestrian yourself and you said that, oh my gosh, in the equestrian community, BKH's products are known for being incredibly expensive. Like if I bought a saddle for my horse from BKH, it would be so much money compared to say a competitor which doesn't cost as much. I don't know anything about horses. The only thing I know about that is connected to horses is medieval jousting, and that's because I love history, and horses were used in jousts in medieval times in Europe. Um, but other than that, I don't really know. So um, when that subscriber told me that, I had to, I was like, hey, I believe you. If you say that in the um, equestrian community, big H saddles are known for being too expensive, then I believe you. So you have to make that decision based on what you know about horses. But obviously, if you shop the equestrian category, your profile is going to look absolutely fantastic. Okay, so now I want to talk about timepieces, I want to talk about fine jewelry, and I'm just so excited because I have so many things we need to discuss. Um, so make sure you watch all the way until the end, you don't want to miss it. Before we start talking about fine jewelry and watches, at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you what I call a bait list. You know how you have like a wait list? You know how Big H is like, oh, wait list, wish list. Well, on this channel, we have a bait list. One of you shared um, a bunch of purchases that you, um, you know, uh, did in order to score your um, quota bags. So we'll talk about that at the end. By the way, the, the term bait is from the Big H community, like on forums and Facebook groups, everyone calls it bait. Some of you don't like <laughs> this term. I think it's hysterical because it's just so funny to me, but I know many people don't actually like the term. Okay, let's start talking about fine jewelry. So fine jewelry is a huge opportunity uh, for bait in 2022. Big H, I think, have accepted that they are a fashion brand now. I think Big H have accepted the writings on the wall. Big H is not compared to other 
leather goods brands, they are, they are compared to other luxury fashion brands. They're always compared to Big C, they're always compared to Louis Vuitton, they're always compared to, you know, Dior, Gucci. Um, they are a fashion brand and I feel like they finally accepted that. And one of the ways we can see that is through their fine jewelry collection. Honestly, their fine jewelry collection is known um, in terms of if you're in a very competitive location where you have to go one-to-one, -one, meaning you need to spend a specific amount that is equivalent to the cost of the bag before you're offered a bag in other categories, I think fine jewelry is an excellent place um, to, to get. However, there have been some movements and changes in the past year. The growth of the resale industry means that fine jewelry and watches are still a great category or both both are still great categories um, to try and score but resellers are also finding it easy to just go into the boutique and buy a watch and buy you know a, a few bits and pieces of fine jewelry and then wait wait for their um, quota bag so you're going to have to do a little bit more this year based on my estimations based on speaking to a bunch of you and based on seeing even seeing like what I saw when I was in Paris so Let's talk about um, yeah. Let's talk about the fine jewelry that I like the most because I think that's the that's a more authentic way to do it. I really like bracelets and bangles. They do have earrings. I'm not actually crazy about their earrings. I'm someone who prefers more bling and ice. They have gold and silver. I, I always feel like when it pertains to their fine jewelry, it's always better to choose gold. I feel like gold is just gold, do you know what I mean? It's gold. Their silver is nice and everything, but it's not as pricey as the gold. Generally speaking, with fine jewelry, you always want to look for the pricier um, options because you will, you're just going to make your profile look much better, basically. So I would always choose gold over silver. If you prefer silver over gold from an aesthetics point of view, I mean, obviously you should pick that, but I mean, gold looks better so they have their earrings again not super crazy about their earrings although i am an earring person these are just costume jewelry um that i got from um i think i just got these from a shop here um but i'm someone who loves bling i love ice i love like standing out with earrings and i feel like their earrings are not like I don't know, I feel like Louis Vuitton's fine jewelry is really, really nice and their earrings are really out there. Theirs are okay, they're a bit too minimalistic for me. Some of you might like that, but it's worth checking out their earrings. Now, where I think their fine jewelry is actually really, really nice are the bracelets and the bangles. I want to talk to you about um, the diamond um, Collier de Chien bracelet. Um, this one is 16,000 euros, it's very pricey, it's really, really, really nice. This one is iced out honey okay it is absolutely um rammed with diamonds um i believe a don't quote me but i think the shadow the shadow back in 25 i think is like 8700 euros so i mean you'd be a two to one if you were like in uh if you were like in france or maybe trying to play the game in paris and we'll talk about paris later you'd be at two to one if you bought that um bracelet but i do think that um it's really really nice i think if you're in another part of the world and you're like okay you know you want your profile to look really good you can't go wrong with that bracelet because it's really really nice i mean obviously you have to know that n nothing is ever guaranteed i just want to be clear about that but i mean that is the kind of bracelet that's, that's going to make your profile look really good Another one that I thought was really nice is the small model version of that um, with diamonds. It has 48 diamonds. It's 7,950. It's really, really nice as well. Um, I think that one is, I think that they said that that one is like 18 karat um, white gold. That one is really nice. And then they also have um, this really beautiful diamond Kelly bracelet. I think it's like 14,800. It has 57 diamonds. Really, really nice. Um, very beautiful obviously <laughs> super pricey that would be at more than one that's more than one to one in um, US dollars for any of the three um, quota bags but I think that those bracelets those bracelets are really really nice now if I was playing the game if I lived in the US Canada Australia um, any part of the world that had a very competitive game or if I was in any of the Asian countries I would focus mainly on the fine jewelry with diamonds versus the ones without. I think if you choose one that doesn't have have, have diamonds in it, it should be um, the gold jewelry. The reason why I would choose the fine jewelry with diamonds is first of all, it's a little bit more expensive, so I think it makes your profile look good. And then the next thing is like, you, there's so many people who are creating reselling businesses. 
and who are buying a lot of bait to create these like huge profiles for themselves. Um, it's too easy basically if you look at it from a reseller point of view for you you all you would have to do is just go and buy like the, the simple gold jewelry that doesn't have a diamond in it and then you'd get a bag really, really quickly. I think that Big H are aware of this <laughs> and I think that the diamond um, fine jewelry is a bit harder. It's not as easy basically if you think about it. So I think it makes your profile look even better. Another thing Big H's fine jewelry um, on the resale market doesn't resell well at all um, in the group we have like a like a just like a joke a jokey name uh, for the <laughs> for fashion for fashion file fashion file is like the FSH outlet um, because it's absolutely rammed with fine jewelry bait watch bait you can tell that people get their offers and then the first thing they do is put their watches up for sale and put their um, fine jewelry diamond bracelets and all these other bits up for sale. I just want to be clear where I stand. I do not condone that. I don't support that. We're all adults here. You can go do what you want. If I buy the cage bait, I'm keeping it. I don't, I really don't like that. Um, and I know that the cage has to hate that because on their website, their jewelry is so expensive. And then you can just take some of these specs and just go on the FSH outlet, AKA fashion file and you're gonna see a ton of fine jewelry that's like half price like because so much of big h fine jewelry and time pieces are on fashion file i've also noticed that a lot of the people who are getting offers are reselling like the more affordable fashion jewelry so like the gold that doesn't have diamonds in it and the silver jewelry and they literally they'll get their offers and they put it on fashion file um, in the group, we laugh about it, like <laughs> that it's crazy that people are doing this. Um, as I've said, I don't support that. I'm not really a fan of that. And I can see where Big H um, would find that annoying and upsetting because it's like their luxury image is kind of being sold for parts. You know, it's kind of like taking your car to the garage or to the shop. And, you know, they kind of they're taking all kinds of spare parts to fix your car. You know, it does it does give this kind of mechanical kind of feeling to the brand and i can see why that would be annoying so i just want to be clear i don't support that i don't condone that i do not think you should be buying bait to resell that's how i feel um if you want to do that that's fine but that is not something that i condone i just want to be clear on where i stand that's why i was saying i can't really talk about all of their fine jewelry because there's a lot of their fine jewelry that i personally wouldn't wear so i wouldn't want to talk about something which i'm not excited about i think you can tell i love their iced out bangles their iced out bracelets that is stuff that i would wear i love bracelets i love rings um you can see here i love big earrings that are, that are really stand out and that are very flashy that is my personal style so i do think that you should be looking for um fine jewelry that is your personal style so that you're not like okay cool i've got my bkc now now i'm going to go to fashion file um i do think that is not cool and i i, I think one of these one of the sort of um I don't know, like one of the consequences of that is that Big H is now kind of increasing free spend. We're seeing it now in the US. A lot of you who've been getting offers worldwide, you know, you told me privately, hey, I just got a BKC, but I did I did go 2 to 1 or I went 2.2 to 1. I am not surprised because they're just seeing too much of their bait is ending up on Fashion File and they're tired, okay? So if you're going to be buying fine jewelry or watches, you buy it to keep it, okay? All right, um, the next thing, before we start talking about watches, I want to quickly address something that we see in the Big H community, which I think is, to be honest, I think is, is um, passe and an outdated way of thinking. And I'm going to defend my point of view because I know some of you are going to be upset with me. I've been upsetting a lot of you recently. Please don't take it personally. That's how I feel. In the Big H community, you always hear, hear people in groups and forums saying, buy what you love, buy what you're passionate about and all of this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, let me stop you right there. That is not the right way of looking at it in 2022. I think a few years ago, like 2017, 2016, it was buy what you love because at that time, homewares was like the thing. You could go in there and buy a few plates and table, table settings, whatever, and they would see that as a sign of lifestyle. Today, homewares, and we're gonna talk about homewares in another episode, um, of this series, homewares is like it's 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 like nothing. You get me? Homewares is like lipstick at Big H. Like everyone can buy it. When people say buy what you love, I know 
what they mean and I know what you mean and if you were, if you believe in this and you already have a few quota bags it's easy for you to say buy what you love because you've already scored from the boutique but for 2022 buy what you love is not going to push the needle or move the boat as it were um, for scores and the reason why is because there's just too much global um, global competition worldwide the competition is so fierce I mean I was not ready for what I saw in January. Um, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. People are not playing in Paris, honey, and they're not playing in any um, part of the world. So when people say buy what you love, I think it's a bit um, outdated. It's not relevant to 2022. This is what I think. This is what I think you should do. You should buy what you like in the categories that Big H is prioritizing. Um, I read the annual reports um, because I find them interesting, but also because I, I think that their annual reports um, offer a lot of clues about where the brand is heading. In the annual report, they talk about their watches, like their watches like literally blew up in 2021. I think it was like plus 73% um, worldwide. So many people are buying their watches. So many people are buying their fine jewelry. And you're going to be like, oh my God, people are buying bake again. People are buying bake. People aren't buying what they love. Okay, that's fine. But there will be some people who do genuinely like um, their fine jewelry and there will be some people who do like their watches. I think you should buy the things that you like. No, I didn't say love. Okay, because I feel like love is a little bit dramatic, to be honest, <laughs> for big H bits and pieces. I think you should buy what you like in the categories that they're prioritizing. They're prioritizing fine jewelry and watches and ready to wear and furniture and the men's um, portion of the business. Those are the categories that they're prioritizing. By all means, like I said, if you, you're an equestrian, if you ride, you should absolutely go and shop there because I'm sure they would love you know, to see you. But th those are the categories that they are prioritizing. So those are the categories that you should be putting more of your effort if you want to score. There's some of you who've told me, hey, you know what? Like, I don't want to score. Um, I just want to buy things that I like and, you know, scoring isn't important to me. I don't want to play the game. If you don't want to play the game, this series is not for you, honey. Okay, you do not need to go play the game. You can just buy whatever you want. And if you get an offer, great. If you don't get an offer, whatever. I'm talking about the people who are trying to score in this year. And this is how I would play it. If I lived in a country with a boutique, I would just focus on the categories that Big H is prioritizing, the categories that I've already mentioned. I actually really like their homewares. Um, I like them. I feel like homewares isn't the category it used to be, and I'll talk about that in the homewares episode. I don't feel like that's really where it's at right now. They're really looking for people to spend a lot of money in the very um, expensive um, categories. So when people say, buy what you love, I think that makes sense in 2015, yeah, in 2016. But I think what you should do instead is you should buy things that you like and buy things that you're going to use in the categories that they're prioritizing. I love ice. I love um, fine jewelry. I love costume jewelry. I love bracelets and rings and all of that. So why not um, get some at Big H and then also get like a really beautiful coat to bag? I think that's a more practical um and a, a little bit more of a transparent way of looking at the big h game in 2022 the reason why i say don't necessarily buy what you love is i feel like because there's so much demand you can just kind of get lost in the shuffle of people who are waiting to score if there are other people who are willing to spend more money than you if, if you just love homewares and you just love their silks and you want to just buy silks all the time i mean let's be clear in a very competitive um, boutique, you are not um, going to really be on the radar. Don't get me wrong, their silks are important. They are important, but it's not going to stand up that much compared to say someone who does buy fine jewelry and someone who does buy watches. So I think it's just important for us to be honest. I wish I knew what I know now about Paris, which is in Paris, there is actually like this unwritten game that actually goes alongside the lottery. Everyone focuses on the lottery, but actually there is a one-to-one -one game <laughs> that is actually going on. Because when I got there, I was thinking everyone is with the lottery, honey. Excuse me, the lottery is like a tiny portion of what is going on in Paris. There are many people who are shopping in there who are buying all kinds of crazy bits and who are also being offered bags. So I just think it's really important for us to keep it Gucci, to keep it honest. I think that's the best way of doing this. I don't want to come here and talk in platitudes. A lot of people who shop at Big H are like little um, philosophers. You know, people have philosophies about buy what you love. Don't tell me buy what I love because 
I, I'm into certain things and I'm pretty sure that even if you go and you spend 10k um, at Big H in homewares, the person who buys and buys jewellery and watches, that person's going to be squeezed in and something's going to happen for that person. I think in a competitive one-to-one -one, um, country or market, there's a lot of opportunity with their timepieces. However, I do think that there has been a shift um, when it pertains to the timepieces. A while ago, you could go and get those like uh, ash watches, the ones that didn't have diamonds or anything like that. Um, I feel like again resellers just bought those watches to make their um, profiles look good and then they take those watches and put them on fashion file as soon as they get their offer. I feel like Big H are aware of that and the watches that you should be looking for in 2022 are the ones that have diamonds or precious stones in them. I want to talk about some that I like, again I'm not saying you have to buy them, these are ones that I would consider. I'm seriously considering this one here, the Cape Cod watch with pink um, sapphires, it's absolutely stunning. Um, it's 4,975 US dollars. I don't see it on the EU site for some reason. I think this is really beautiful. Love this. The Fubourg watch um, with 44 diamonds, it's 11,000 euros. There is an absolutely stunning, breathtaking watch that I think is absolutely stunning. And I mean this, I mean it honestly, I would wear this. This one is the Nantucket watch with 55 diamonds. Big H says sprinkled on top like of the watch is 13,200. I think this is absolutely breathtaking. Once I have my Cartier Holy Grail watch, I would definitely consider this one. I think this is a stunning piece. It's one of the most beautiful um, watches that I have seen from Big H. Their watches look good. Their watches look good. Like, you know, we always come from Big H, I need okay, Big H gets dry every single day, but these watches look good, like the ones with the diamonds. Now, I know you're gonna be like, why are you saying we should get the ones with diamonds? Again, they want to be a upscale brand. Um, I think that the ones with the diamonds will make your profile stand out a little bit more. I feel like the more affordable watches, I think that if you're, let's say you buy like the affordable jewelry and the affordable watches, I feel like it makes your profile look quite obvious that you just want to score a bag really quickly. Whereas I feel, and who knows, you might take those bits and put them on fashion file, you know, and resell your bait. Whereas I feel like the um, ones with diamonds, those are really beautiful lifestyle pieces. And I think people who are more inclined to buy the watches with diamonds, the fine jewelries with diamonds, and not just diamonds, they have like pink sapphires, they have other gemstones. I feel like that's a sign that you're more likely to use the item because to be honest, if you buy, um, any of these watches or bracelets with diamonds like you're not going to get back what you pay for them like you, you're going to put them on fashion file fashion file will give you like like literally it'll be like at 70% off so I think that on your profile you look more like a real client and like I said that's really what you should be doing in the first place so those are the fine jewelry bits and time pieces um when it pertains to women's timepieces, um, obviously all of these are the women's watches. There's a huge opportunity for men's watches. Um, I love the idea of maybe going to get your boyfriend or your husband or your dad, your brother, um, a watch from Big H. I think it's a massive opportunity that we don't really talk about in the Big H world. I think it is a huge opportunity. It's something to consider. They're very pricey, the men's watches. You can just go on the website and check them out, but I think that there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity. I feel like if I was going one-to-one, -one, I would buy a Kelly bracelet for myself, I'd buy a watch for my husband, I'd buy, I'd buy one of these really pretty diamond watches for myself to make my profile look really great, depending on which market I'm in. I think if you buy those three already, you'd be at, I mean, honestly, you'd probably be at like 2.5 to 1 if we're just going based off euros, or you'd be at 3, three to 1 to be honest, and you'd probably have already um, gotten an offer. So it's up to you to decide which one works for you. I still think that fine jewelry and watches is a huge opportunity. Many people feel like, oh, everyone buys fine jewelry now. Everyone buys watches now. Mm, not really. People are buying the affordable um, bits. So people are buying the uh, Ash watches that are very, you know, they're very classic and nice, but they're not really that pricey. They don't have diamonds in them. There are some uh, Ash watches that do have diamonds in them. They're very pricey. People are not buying those ones. I would always just look for fine jewelry with diamonds, watches with diamonds, um, and I would focus there. I do feel like you will get the offer um, quite quickly. Um, and, and, and because it's not just like me saying it, after speaking to so many of you, many people who've reached out to me privately and who have said, hey, this is what I purchased in order to get a back in a Kelly or a Constance, many people have bought fine jewelry and have bought um, watches. And once you buy fine jewelry and watches, 
all of a sudden, you know, the back in talk, you know, starts becoming a little bit more um, vigorous and you, you will magically see that you get an offer. So um, I just wanted to mention that there will be some of you saying, well, what about the Apple Watches? Um, I really don't feel like the Apple Watches count. Um, I wouldn't waste time. T to be honest, like my kind of approach to this, like if I was you guys, if I lived in a country with a boutique, my time is valuable, my time is precious. Um, I have other things to do with my time. I have other work things, other business things to do. I wouldn't waste time buying um, I'm not saying that it's not important, but I, if I'm trying to score a bag, I personally wouldn't buy um, the big H um, Apple Watches. I think you should focus on the um, the more the more the more jewelry looking watches, the ones that look like jewelry basically that have diamonds, that have gemstones, and the fine jewelry that obviously has diamonds in it. Because before we talk about the bait list, I quickly just wanted to mention Big H actually have a high jewelry line. I didn't know this until, until I started researching this bait series. But basically, they do have a high jewelry, jewelry line that was wrong with me today. Um, and Pierre Hardy, who's a very famous French fashion designer, he is the creative lead for that. Um, high jewelry um, in most brands, in order for something to be considered um, high jewelry, it has to start at $100,000, 100,000 euros, or 100,000 pounds. So it's safe to say that every single piece in that collection will at least be 100,000 euros. I just thought I'd mention it just in case some of you are interested. Um, I mean, obviously if you bought a piece from their you know high jewelry collection i'm pretty sure you will be you know offered bags that no one gets offered unless they're a vvip like the football back in or himalayan and things like that i just thought it was worth mentioning really quickly okay um now let's talk about the bait list i think you're going to love this so i want to say thank you to one of my subscribers who's in australia she reached out to me and said that she was comfortable with me sharing um, her bait list um, she was so generous and she went into a ton of detail so the first massive score that she got was a kelly 25 um, in gold with gold hardware she scored this in 2021 um, and the purchases that she um, made in order to support this very beautiful unicorn offer from Big H was um, the Kelly Diamond Bracelet hello, um, and a men's briefcase. Um, so based because because she's in Australia, she told me the pricing. I'm just going to take the spending ratio because I don't want to I don't want to talk in too much detail. I want to keep things nice and vague. But basically, she with with the the men's um, briefcase and the um, Kelly Diamond bracelet, she went about 1.7 to 1 um, for that offer. So it was 1.7 to 1, which for 2021, I feel like is pretty um, accurate, particularly because Australia is known for being one of the most competitive markets for Big H in the world. I think the Australian market has five boutiques. Um, it's incredibly competitive, like if we include the um, store, I mean, the airport um, boutique as well. So she went 1.7 to 1 basically for that first offer, which was a Kelly gold on gold the second offer um, me and her we had a chat and we basically agreed that it was two to one so she went two to one for her second offer which she got this year which was a Birkin 30 in a very desirable neutral color um, so this is the bait this is her bait list now for her second offer she says lots of ready to wear she bought dresses she bought a silk cardigan she bought cash uh, cashmere jumpers she also bought men's press a porte which we're going to talk about in the ready to wear episode because that's a huge opportunity she bought men's jumpers, um, um, man's jacket. She also bought um, a cashmere coat for women. She bought um, some porcelain, so she bought some change trays. She got a Kelly belt, men's trainers. She also got um, a bunch of shoes for women, such as the Orans, the Oasis sandals, and the Saint um, Germain um, boots. She bought a Avalon blanket. She also got a Cape Cod exotic strap um, and some beauty um, products as well. So those are the things that she purchased for the second offer. So let's kind of recap this beta list. The first offer in the big H world, if you're shopping in a boutique, is always said to be the easiest offer. So she only purchased two items to um, show her loyalty and then she was offered a really, really, really beautiful spec, which was the Kelly 25 gold on gold. Great spec. Um, I'm not going to mention whether it was Return or Sellier because I don't want to say too much um, of the info about that, but that is an incredible offer. Many people would love to get that. Um, you can see the power of fine jewelry here. Um, 
with, with that first offer because obviously the Kelly diamond bracelet is very pricey and that clearly just pushed things to the next level and then she got the offer. The next part here though, she's shopping across multiple categories and then she, she gets her offer. I think shopping across multiple categories is really, really good. We see the power of ready to wear here. Don't forget she's already purchased her fine jewelry piece for her first offer. So for her second offer, she diversifies. She was buying ready to wear. She's buying men's trainers. She's buying women's shoes. She has um, some homewares in there as well. I love that she bought the, um, uh, she also bought a um, timepiece. She bought the Cape Cod watch that had an exotic strap with diamonds. Remember what I told you, you always want to have diamonds in there. And then she got a really beautiful Birkin 30 in a very coveted neutral color that many of you would like. And she got that one this year. So basically, in 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 under to be honest with you in under 12 months she got um two coveted um like quota bags basically um a birkin and a kelly but what i was saying about fine jewelry we can really see it manifesting in this bait list because i've already said you want to look for fine jewelry with diamonds you want to look for watches with diamonds in 2022. You have to do the things that the people who are trying to resell and flip bags are not doing. A re only someone who's doing reselling professionally and has a lot of cash to burn can buy the Diamond Kelly bracelet every month in under multiple profiles. Only someone with a lot of money can buy the Cape Cod with watch with diamonds and with an uh, with an exotic strap, um, all like every every single month under multiple profiles. Only people that have a lot of extra cash can do that. That's why I feel like looking for the fine jewelry and the timepieces with diamonds is a really great place um, to start. So I love this bait list. I learned a lot from her bait list. Um, we were talking, me and her, and we have pretty much like agreed that Australia is two to one. If you're in Australia um, and you're trying to score um, in Australian dollars, Australia is a two to one um, country at this point um, across all of the boutiques um, it's incredibly competitive to score a bag in Australia um, you do need to spend quite a bit and that's because the local market is so competitive and they have a lot of um, tourists as well from Asia but also Australian citizens and Australian residents are boiling hard so people can afford to spend um, to create really really good profiles in order to be considered for one of the three um, holy grail quota bags i'd love to know what you guys think about everything so far make sure that you're fully subscribed to my channel you hit notifications you join my facebook group which is linked below and you follow me on my socials i think something else that i've noticed there is for me i love the way she got her first offer i love that it was a fine jewelry piece and um the, the briefcase from the men's part the business and then she got her offer i love that the second offer was like a lot of ready to wear for like men and women and fine jewelry uh, and the, the timepiece that had the diamond in it so generally speaking fine jewelry and watches are huge 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 opportunity across the world choose the one with diamonds please don't be stubborn um i know i'm gonna have people yelling at me oh you're telling people to buy things they don't want to buy and then they're gonna put them on fashion file obviously you should buy things that you're going to use but i do think if you want an offer you know go for the fine jewelry with diamonds go for the watches with diamonds i mean the the, the literally the experiences that so many of you have had um don't lie now after discussing this bait list um i know many of you are going i know i'm going to get so many detractors and a lot of hate for this series so i want to kind of preempt some of the stuff that i'm going to get in the comments and things like that it's a relationship okay um let me be clear how where i stand i don't believe that these are relationships i think these are business um transactional um they're just business transactions you do business transactions with your essay if you want to call it a relationship so that you can feel warm and fuzzy about it you can go do that but this is about money if you stop spending money at big age your your essay honey he or she's going to move on honey to the people who are spending money and you won't be getting those calls um for those bags anymore okay it's not gonna happen 
I think that when people say that, people like to feel good about it. I do think that there's some of you who've been grandfathered into really special situations where maybe before Instagram, when Big H wasn't really a big deal, Big H was just there, but people weren't too work pressed or worried about Big H. There are some of you who were shopping before Big H was even mentioned in the um, SATC series, and that's when it was mentioned in, in that TV show, that's when things really took off. There are many of you who've been shopping from even before then. I think if you're in a situation like that where you were shopping at the brand before Instagram, before social media, um, before the brand really kind of took off like online, I do feel like you're grandfathered into a relationship with the brand and you can probably not really have to spend that much because you've been shopping for, for such a long period of time. That is not the majority of us, irrespective of how much money you have. People are introduced to the brand at different times. I only started learning about the brand when Jean-Paul Gaultier was working at the brand when I was doing my masters and that was a, that was a long um, time ago and I was only I only started getting interested because I was like oh I like Jean-Paul Gaultier why is he working there okay let me learn you know about this brand so when people say it's a relationship I think the smarter way to look at it is if you want to see it as a relationship that's fine but remember it is based on money okay it is based on how much money you're spending it's based on what you're buying we all know that the commissions are very high for the essays well not very high but they're decently high allegedly for the essays in fine jewelry and watches versus say um fashion jewelry um or the non quotes bags where the commission is like absolutely tiny so of course someone you know who's working at a brand if they're going to be earning more money by selling you a a fine jewelry piece with a diamond in it or a watch with a, with a diamond in it you better believe that you are going to be leapfrogging ahead of people who are not buying fine jewelry and who are not um, buying diamonds this isn't a set rule but like i said i've spoken to about a baker's dozen of you who have scored recently in decently competitive locations even if you went more than one to one or more than two to one fine jewelry and watches keep rearing their faces again in a lot of these bake lists people are buying fine jewelry and people are buying watches like fine jewelry is like hey watches are like hey i'm here so i just want to be very clear on that because i don't want people saying well it's about the relationship i don't really spend that much and you know blah 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 if you don't spend that much good for you but in really competitive markets in the us canada singapore china australia japan south korea singapore the uae um in really competitive markets it is you know to be honest and to be completely blunt what you buy is important now like i said it's not an exact science um some people can afford to spend you know 20,000 US dollars or 20,000 pounds in one sitting um, and might be able to walk away with what might be able to walk away with a bag that day some people might spend that amount and walk away with nothing it's not a guarantee some of you have told me privately like oh well I think if you spend that much money really quickly people are gonna think they, they might think you're a reseller I feel like if you're buying the stuff that doesn't have diamonds in it and you're buying the really affordable fine jewelry and the really affordable um, time pieces I do think that gives off reseller vibes just because so much of the affordable fine jewelry and the affordable watches are literally on fashion file like people were buying the affordable um, fine jewelry and the affordable um, watches in 2020 and in 2021 and then just putting them up um, for sale as bait. Something else that I think is really important to mention when we, we're talking about bait, and I only want to mention it now because um, I don't want people saying, well, I got a bag, da -da. like, I want, to, I want to make sure I'm preempting a lot of you because one of the things is that when C19 happened in spring 2020, you know everyone thought that the luxury goods industry was done you know people thought i mean even on youtube i i think many luxury youtubers thought no one's going to watch my videos people think that my videos are like probably tone deaf no one's going to watch my channel my channel is going to fail many many people thought that and many people thought that the luxury goods interest in the luxury goods industry was done um so big H did release a lot of bags in 2020 to people with barely any spend 2020 is a black swan event you cannot look at any scores in 2020 that were done without purchase history and use them as a barometer for 2022 2021 big H had one of their most successful years that they've ever had in the existence of the company one of their most successful years it was a banner year for the brand they bounced back after c19 and it's all systems go so basically 
Big H doesn't really need to release any bags in one-to-one -one countries that are very competitive um, to people who are not going to buy bait because they had a really great 2021 season, they had a great year, things went really great for them. So why would you offer a bag to someone without purchase history? So I'm just going to mention the caveats um, and the sort of unicorn experiences because I know there'll be people saying, well, I was offered a bag and I didn't spend any money. First of all, I highly doubt that you would walk into the New York, any of the New York boutiques, the Miami boutique, um, the um, some of the European boutiques like the Amsterdam store or Geneva, and say, hello, I'd like a Kelly 25 gold on gold in a cellier, and to be offered that without purchase history. I, I just don't believe that, I'm sorry. Okay, that is a very, very desirable spec that many people would happily um, go one-to-one -one for in order to score that piece. A lot of the times it, when you hear unicorn stories, they're like colors that are undesirable by the BKH community. Don't panic now, okay? But it's true, okay? They are sitting duck um, colors. So there'll be really bright colors that people don't want to, um, basically people would rather not have. So for example, fur, the very famous fur, the Big H orange fur color um, that people don't like. That color is known. If you read forums um, and you go on Facebook groups, you read about how, oh, you know, I was offered this and I didn't have any purchase history. If they offer you an orange Birkin or Kelly, you have never spent a pound penny shin your row. That's because the color is hard to shift. Then you have colors like blue electric, a really, really bright blue. Um, some I've seen, I, I remember in this other group, someone was offered a Kelly um, in a really bright blue. I think it was actually blue electric. And they were like, oh, I didn't spend anything. And the people were like, how much, like, what, what color um, was your Kelly? And then it puts a picture of the Kelly. The Kelly is this bright blue. It's like really, really bright. I mean, people are not going to be taking that color. And don't get, don't get it twisted. I love pink. I know there's certain pinks that um, would be considered sitting duck um, colors, like row shocking. Many people probably wouldn't want to take um, that one because it's a bit too bright. So it's important to note that because a unicorn experience is just that. It is a Pegasus unicorn experience that happened in a period of time. A lot of you have mentioned to me so many times about influencers and bloggers who were offered bags in 2020 um, during C19. Like I said, it was an apocalyptic event that all of these brands thought that they were all going to like, you know, li literally just like fade away and no one go was going to want their products. So they did release more bags. By the time it was like spring 2021, that window had closed. Okay. And then even and even now, let's be honest, like how many like Birkin and Kelly and Constance unboxings have you seen in 2022? You're not really seeing um, Big H unboxings like that anymore. And that's because pre-spend has gone up. A lot of people, you know, are influencers and bloggers. It is easier for an influencer or blogger to be offered a bag compared to just someone who is shopping at the brand. But you're not really seeing those unboxings like that anymore on YouTube, the way you were seeing them in 2020. Remember in 2020, we were seeing tons of unboxings all of the time. Oh my gosh, I got this. I didn't spend anything. That was a period of time, a black swan event, an act of God, a force majeure event um, that we're not going to see again, honestly, because now what Big H is doing, a lot of you who are in the US and Canada agreed with me, we've all talked privately about this, and even some of you in Europe, we've chatted about it as well, is that pre-spend is going up. So pre-spend is going up to deter people who are doing reselling like as a side business so someone there are people who have like you know, and who have like an extra ten thousand dollars a month okay and who can use that to buy bait and then they'll take that bait and then they'll go and resell it on fashion file bk wants to deter those people so a good way of deterring those people is requiring people to buy the pricier fine jewelry to buy the pricier watches this is all stuff that I've gleaned um, from chatting to a lot of you, but also reading the annual report. The annual report is a very long document. It's a financial document. They're a publicly traded company. But when you read it, you actually kind of realize that, oh, okay, they're requiring basically people to kind of spend more, but they're just not saying it. And remember, Big H has never said that you have to buy lots of things. Don't forget, there will be unicorn experiences every now and then, but a true unicorn experience, we haven't really heard or seen those on YouTube and Instagram for a very long period of time. You can't count Paris because Paris is a lottery, and I want to talk about Paris in a moment, and France, um, generally speaking, because there's some changes and things that are moving um, that some of you might not know about, so I think I'd also just want to let you know about that. So um, I think that's basically it when it pertains to the unicorn thing because I just I don't want people to be like, well, that's what I think. And I've been told this. I had the wrong impression of Big H before I traveled. To keep it completely blunt, 
I believed a lot of the stories that I heard that it was about a relationship and this and all of this. And then when I got there, I was like, oh my gosh, it's not about that at all. It's about money. Oh my gosh, why are people saying this? It is about the money. So let's talk about Paris really quickly. As most of you know, the, the three Parisian stores are basically a lottery. So you apply online, you try really hard to get an appointment. Um, but it seems to me, um, after my experience in January, after speaking to a lot of you who've been there as well recently, that there's basically like another business model there that requires um, a degree of spend. Not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but there are there, there is like another business model there where people are spending a lot of money buying across all of the metiers and then gently asking for bags um, and being given being given bags that is happening um that's something that many people shop in paris know but for some reason no one wants to say it okay i don't mind saying it gently in my michael jackson voice my dad was an ambassador um so he taught me how to speak in a very diplomatic way my mom was also a diplomat so i'm going to say this as diplomatically as i can because i don't want to get in trouble now make the horse angry but to keep it gangster to keep it diplomatic okay don't believe everything you read about the lottery. There are all kinds of um, shenanigans going on in the Parisian boutiques and people are shopping and buying across a wide range of categories. And not just because they love Big Cage, but because of course they would love to score one of the three quotes bags. I think it's worth mentioning that because I don't want people, um, if you're planning to go to France this year, or you're planning to go to Paris um, this year, I don't want you to really think that the lottery is the, the way. I, I think I mistakenly thought that. If I had known the things that I know now about Paris after going in January, I would have just gone and pre-spent way more than I did, um, honestly. And I feel like I probably would have left with the bag. That's just my kind of reading on it. So I just wanted to kind of share that. I'm not even really speaking in a lot of detail. If those of you who are members of my Facebook group, you know exactly how I feel about it. And you know my exact feelings on it. I'm trying to be quite diplomatic for my channel because I want to keep things nice and diplomatic now based on what I've been reading in the annual reports and stuff. But the bottom line is they're kind of like two business models in Paris. One truly is the lottery so that they can give everyone that Pegasus experience where Pegasus walks in and Pegasus offers you these bags and you have spent a pound, penny, shilling, euro. But actually there is a very... Um, there's a very like tiered business model there that is actually based on spend across the different categories and showing loyalty to the three Parisian boutiques and I think it is worth noting that. France is an interesting um, example more broadly speaking it's like a hybrid you have some boutiques which are um, j just for locals so if you go there and say hey I'd like to buy a bag you're like no sorry it's only for locals who live in the city but then you have other places like Cannes like Nice, like um, um, Lyon, um, which are known, like if they have the bag there, maybe you'll, they'll ask you to, to buy a few bits or maybe you'll buy some ready to wear and then they'll offer you a bag. You might not even have to go one to one, it might be 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 and then you're gonna be offered a bag. And then you have places like Monaco, which are, have, are known for offering bags to tourists like every now and then if they have the bag there. So I just wanted to add some clarity um, and some context to a lot of things that I said because a lot of this is location dependent, but generally speaking, fine jewelry and timepieces is where it's at right now. Um, if you can afford it um, and if you want to, go for the ones with diamonds. Um, I feel like the offer will just come much faster. I've spoken to so many of you at the moment um, who um, have scored in the past like six months. So let's say, um, yeah, like the autumn of 2021 up until now, like those of you who are scoring now and those of you who are scoring now, you are buying fine jewelry, you are buying the timepieces with diamonds and you're buying the fine jewelry with diamonds, okay? Don't hate the player. You hate the game. It is what it is. No one has to shop at um, Big H. Big H is not the only brand that does this. Rolex does this. AP does this. Go, go take like three hundred thousand dollars and go see if you can go buy a brand new Ferrari, like a new model Ferrari, without having other Ferraris. Okay, in the dealership they'll look at you like, girl, bye. Okay, <laughs> like. Like, what are you doing? So I just wanted to share this first um, part one episode. I have other parts coming very soon. 
I have one um, coming on Ready to Wear. I'm really excited about that one. I've got the Homewares one. We're going to talk about all kinds of bait and things that you can buy. I would love to know what you think, so please make sure you drop me a comment below. I'd love to know what you think of the bait list from Australia. I have some other bait lists coming from the US as well, so I'll talk about those in subsequent um, episodes of the series. As I told you, it is a four-part series, so make sure that you're fully subscribed, you've hit notifications, and understand that I did a ton of research into this. It's not like I spoke to just one person. I'm going just based off my experience. In January, I spoke to at least a baker's dozen of you for this because I want to make sure that I am really like backing up what I'm saying. So I really hope that you've enjoyed um, today's video. And final reminder, don't forget, Big H has never said <laughs> that we need to do any of this. However, worldwide, everyone is doing this and being offered bags. So obviously, it is a trend. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video.